good reason not to, um, uh, to eat the animals was actually brought out by the Cleveland Clinic investigators. Uh, they started talking about this about seven years ago, and I think we're at the point that they have enough data that this will become mainstream cardiology, and you'll go to the uh, doctor and they'll measure your blood pressure, they'll do your cholesterol, and they'll measure your TMAO level. Trimethylamine in oxide is a substance, and this is a New England Journal of Medicine article, where you take the cheese, eggs, and steak and you eat it, and uh, you're putting in choline that then gets converted in your gut to trimethylamine, which then goes to your liver and is oxidized into trimethylamine in oxide. Now, what's wrong with that compound? Pretty much everything. It does everything that you would not want in your cardiovascular system. It upsets, it creates plaque, upsets the plaque, makes the platelet, the little uh, blood clotting elements more sticky so that you form more clots. And so when you're, when you're done with this, you end up in a situation where uh, you have um, more mortality, more heart attack and stroke, and more heart failure mortality as well. So we all ought to be more concerned about that, um, and hopefully we're getting to the point where everybody's recognizing that that really is an important four-letter word. Now, I've given you a wide variety of things, that there, but there are some more, and I, I don't think that we could possibly cover everything that's ever been done in this field. Uh, Andrea uh, Woke tried in this article, uh, Hazards of Eating Red Meat, she categorized a number of articles saying that people shouldn't do red meat. And uh, a few years ago, it was 450, and you can see that it goes up every year. And it, what's wrong with it? If it? Other than the strokes and the diabetes and the coronary heart disease and heart failure, not much. Okay? Worse for processed meat than for unprocessed meat. And this complicated slide, which hopefully uh, Stephen uh, will allow you to you know, take a copy of, or you could Google uh, Andrea Wolk and, and see it for yourself. Um, on the left is the TMAO. Um, in the middle is heme iron. And there's a, a bunch of compounds uh, that all come from meat um, that particularly processed meat that harm health. Um, heme iron is worth mentioning. It was in our National Institutes of Health, AARP, uh, health study that um, it actually produces reactive oxygen species. What that really means is that it's sort of oxidative damage. Uh, so please get your iron from vegetables and not from animals. Um, and that will help protect the plaque in your coronary arteries from the peroxidation and the instability that uh, uh, cause, that's, it causes. Now, uh, there's one new risk factor that, uh, if you've heard me speak on this before, you haven't seen because it's relatively new. It's uh, IgE. That is an a, um, immune globulin, and it is, it's the kind of uh, immune globulin that goes up with allergies. And it turns out that there are some mammals or some humans that shouldn't eat other mammals because they develop a, an allergic response to galactose uh, alpha-1,3 galactose, and that is associated with uh, dramatically increasing the amount of coronary plaque. And so this also might become a blood test that people do to, turn, to determine if one of those people who could actually eat animal uh, products uh, safely. I should mention plaque regression because it's so important to what we do in cardiology. If we, and we've had this data for a long time. This shouldn't be a surprise. This is a 20-year-old slide showing that you take horrific cholesterol medicines with a lot of side effects um, and lower the cholesterol, and you will lower the plaque if you tolerate those medicines. Um, then in, uh, a few years later, we had better medicines, the statins at high doses, um, and you take rosuvastatin or tovastatin at high doses, and you can get over a two-year period your plaque to go down by about 50%. But how about diet? Well, diet can reduce plaque. It can also improve blood flow because it Im improves the artery function. And so the very famous Dr. Esselstyn slide where the 41-year-old anesthesiologist gets all of his plaque burden to go away, uh, with diet is tremendous. Um, but um, it's something that isn't widely recognized and something that we, we really need to, to focus on. All right, so I would say that in summary, 
we really have uh, talked about a lot of our heart disease issues. It's uh, a burden, not just in the United States, but in the entire world. It's driven by diet and lifestyle issues, but mediated by an increase in obesity and type 1 diabetes, as well as hypertension and, and, and terrible cholesterol. There really are uh, for no safe animal products for uh, those of us who have cardiac risk factors. Uh, and everyone should be avoiding processed meat, um, but all animal products to some degree, uh, trans fat, saturated fat, sugar, refined carbohydrates, all of them promote cardiovascular risk, and all of them can be removed in a whole food plant-based diet. Um, and if we could do that uh, and in a wide a scale, we would change that. You know, If you've ever seen these curves of health, uh, healthiness of the population versus expenditures, the United States is the one outlier where we spend a massive amount and have terrible health of our population. We could change that, uh, and it would be great for our, for our country. I, and I really do, I've said it over and over again, um, that everyone should do plant, whole food, plant-based diet uh, as, a, uh, as a patriotic duty to the United States of America. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So thank you. Thank you so much.